Today on The Joy of Editing, I'll guide you through a step-by-step process to continue editing your RAW files from Lightroom with Topaz Photo AI, despite the recent changes. This is a temporary solution until a future update from Topaz addresses this issue. Stay tuned. Hello everyone, welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. If you're like me, since the last Topaz Photo AI update, whenever we send a RAW file into Topaz Photo AI from Lightroom, it returns back as a TIFF file. And if you like working in the RAW format inside of Lightroom, which most of us do, you're not too happy with Topaz right now. I'm sure they'll fix this in a future update, but... Right now, it's not fixed, and I'll show you a really good and pretty simple workaround for that. Now, the way we used to do this before was to select any of the RAW files that you want. Like, I'll just select this one RAW file. I'm not going to send it into Topaz Photo AI, but I'll show you how we did it. You would select one or all your RAW files, and then you would come up here to File and come down to plug in extras, and then go and find process with Topaz Photo AI. Click on that. That would send your image over to Topaz Photo AI where you would denoise, sharpen, whatever you need to do. And then you would export them back to Lightroom as RAW files. But now they come back as TIFF files and most of us are not too happy about that. Now, let me show you my workaround. What you would do, you would select one or all images. I'm gonna select one first. Just right click on the image and you're gonna find show in Finder. Click that, your Finder will open up or your file browser, whatever you use, and I'm using a Mac. And then you would see that folder of images and that image is the one that I have chosen. Then you would simply right click on it, hover over open with, and then find Topaz Photo AI app. Click on that, that would open up Topaz Photo AI. Then you could process your image and then you would export it back to the folder it came from. But let's say I don't just want to do one image. I want to do all three of these images. I want to send them all into Topaz Photo AI. So I could do a command or control A to select all the photos and then right click on any of these photos and look for show and finder or whatever it shows on a Windows machine, but you'll notice it will be grayed out. So that's an issue, at least it is on a Mac. It may not be that way in Windows, I don't know. But anyway, we can't do that. So there's a workaround for that and it's really simple. I'll show you what to do. What you need to do is left click with your mouse, not on the image itself or you won't deselect these other two images. You have to click outside of the photo like here, or here, and now we're only selecting that one image. So that's important. And then right click on the image, click on show and finder or whatever it is on a Windows machine, click that. And now we see that folder of images with this one selected right here. Now I need to select this image and this image. Do not select these XMP files or you won't be able to do this. You only want the images. So I can command or control click this image and this image. So you do have to select each individual image and then you could right click any image, open with, and then find Topaz Photo AI app. Click on that, that will launch Topaz Photo AI and send these three images into Photo AI. And once in Photo AI, you know it's gonna run autopilot and determine if they need denoising, sharpening, or both. And as you can see, this image is requiring raw denoise. And if I click on raw denoise, you can see the amounts it's set. Now I could go and change anything I want. I could come and click plus to add an enhancement and then I could add like sharpen to it. Do not use adjust lighting or balance color because if you do, these will definitely come back as TIFF files. And then since Topaz added the ability to use adjust lighting and balance color on a raw file, whenever you do that, they cannot send it back as a raw file, only a TIFF, so don't use that. And that's why this issue I believe developed in this latest update working with Lightroom and RAW files. Now in this image, if you wanna add sharpening, you could come up to add enhancements, click the plus and click sharpen. That would add a sharpen adjustment to this image. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna stick with autopilot today because this tutorial is not about how to use Photo AI, but it is about how to overcome the issue of sending images from Lightroom into Photo AI and coming back as TIFF files. 
But if you're someone who likes to have hands-on and make your own adjustments, for instance, I could click on raw denoise and adjust the strength, minor deep blur differently, or change the AI model, whichever you like, you know, add an enhancement. Again, you can add sharpen, do not add adjust lighting and balance color, very important. You can also work with your presets, anything you want. But again, I'm just using autopilot today. Now, I am one of those who like to get in here and tweak my adjustments. So I would get this set up the way I like it. Then I would click on my next image and then autopilot would run and show me what it's got for this image. And it's only chosen raw denoise on this image, no sharpening. Let me click on the first image. Autopilot is running on this one and autopilot is using denoise. And again, I could click on this and change it if I want to, but I'm only using autopilot today. So now all I need to do is click this checkbox, select all to select all three. And if I hover over these, you'll notice this is autopilot with the raw denoise amount of 10% and 5% for minor deep blur. If I hover over this one, raw denoise with 10% uh, denoise, 5% minor deep blur. And for this one, it's using 13% raw denoise and 6% minor deep blur. So there we go. That's autopilot. And now that I have all three images selected after checking on select all, you'll notice this says export three images, click on this, and then you set this up for how you want to export. I like to put the prefix of photo AI on my images. That way I know Topaz photo AI has processed these images. Now, I also like to toggle this on, add applied filters to file name. That way I know what has been done to those files, if they've been sharpened, denoised, or both. Then as far as save to, I want to save to the original folder. That's important here for what I'm showing you today. For this workaround to work, they need to go back to that original folder. And then also in format, make sure you have preserve input format. So if you click this, it's a drop down. You can choose JPEG, PNG, TIFF, or DNG. No need to choose DNG here because I want to preserve their original format, which was a raw file. They were CR2s. They'll come back as DNG raw files, as you can see right here. And note here, it says your raw files will be converted to 16-bit DNG, and that's what I want. I'll click Save, and now you'll see they'll start to process out. Now, it takes a little bit of time, and it will vary from computer to computer, but you just have to wait it out. I'm using a uh, 2019 iMac with an Intel processor, and as you can see, it's pretty fast. Now, I don't generally batch process images, but I'm pretty impressed of how quick this is, and it's done. I'm finished with Topaz Photo AI, so I can come up here and click Topaz Photo AI and come down and quit. Now, here I am back in Lightroom, and you'll notice we don't see our three Photo AI files back here in Lightroom. This is all you have to do, and this is really simple. All you need to do is come to the file folder, right-click on it, and click synchronize folder so i'll click this and then see this little checkbox it's checked on for you import new photos three just click synchronize and then in a second or two you'll see there are your three photo ai photo results now at this point what i like to do is right click on any one of the images and then come down to go to folder and library click on it and there are your images and now you'll notice here's the CR2 file of this image and next to it is the photo AI image. The same here, the CR2, the photo AI, CR2, photo AI. Now the CR2s look different because I did some editing on those, but I'll show you how we can apply that same edit to these images. And here's all you need to do. I'll click on the first image, click develop, and there's that image. And what I need to do at this point is simply click on copy, now, in this case, I want everything checked on. I'll click copy, click on library, and now I'll click on this image, click develop, and then I'll click paste. And now those adjustments get applied. Crops, whatever adjustments I made. The same here. I'll click on this image, click copy. And again, I have everything checked on. You can just click check all or check none, but check all, so they're all checked. Click copy. Now I'll click on this image, and I'll click paste and it'll paste those on there. And again, I'll go to the final image, click copy, copy, click this image, and I will click paste, and there you go. It's just that easy. And now if I go back to my library by clicking library, or 
using the shortcut G so I can see my thumbnails. There you can see there's all those images. So the image on the left is the original CR2 RAW file. The image on the right is the photo AI. And that goes for all the different images. But that is the workaround until photo AI get this issue fixed. And hopefully it'll come within the next update or so. Hopefully the next one. Before I go, I wanted to show you my result of one of the images anyway. This is zoomed into 200%. Now, this is the original CR2 RAW file without noise reduction or sharpening. And now we can compare it to the Topaz Photo AI result. As you can see, the noise has been removed. It's been sharpened. So I hope this Lightroom to Topaz Photo AI workaround will help you at least until Topaz addressed this issue of returning RAW files back to Lightroom. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.